That was the that first was one. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. To the And What Not podcast. And What Not. This is episode four. Episode four. We missed the last episode because we, did. we were sick. We were. There were like, that was the only time I actually missed a daily. That's like also the first time that I think we've both been sick at the, sick same, at the same time in like two years. Yeah. So we were both out for the count. Amanda and I were on a shoot the other day um, and she was not feeling well and whatever she got hit me the next day. Like, But I think you weren't, because you were sneezing that day. I was. Because even when you were sneezing, I was like, oh no. Like, we're both going to get sick. And yeah, now, we did. Sure enough, we did. Our fellow coworkers now out sick as well. So. Oh yeah, that's right. It's just right. going down the line. It's going down. Whatever. It's wow. that time of year. The weather is changing. It's going from hot to cold. Oh my god, yeah. People, I, I don't really get like bad allergies, but my friend, I don't know if you know anyone like this, like he gets the worst allergies, like legitimately like snot running down their face, like eyes bright red. It's I like, what's wrong feel with bad for those people. Like I get them like during the springtime, but yeah, there's like those people and I just, I feel bad. He's, he's my, I always mention my psychopath friend. He's my psychopath friend, and um, we need a name for him. We do. I gotta give him something. Pernicio. Pernicio. So Pernicio. psychopath friend, Pernicio. Pernicio. Now Pernicio um, is just a grimy, gross, disgusting dude. Um, like seriously, no. Like listen, I love him. He, he he's a friend of mine. He's he he's. I laugh with him and I laugh at him. What does that say right there? <laughs> Um, I laugh with him and I laugh at him. Like, he's just a guy to laugh at, really, mostly. But, um, like, he's really gross. He has, like, no manners whatsoever. Um, and uh, he's the kind of dude, like, every time I talk about this, it's like, people are going to ask why I'm friends with this guy. He um, blows, like, snot rockets, just... He'll be driving and just onto himself. And like that's natural for him. Like that's he natural. doesn't think anything of it when he does it. No second thoughts. He just does it. I hate who, people who are so not aware of themselves. Yeah. That they do those things in front of people. He's, so you'll be like in the passenger seat and he'll yeah, just blow them. Yeah, so gross. Where does he blow it? Like into well, a just onto a shirt. No. But he doesn't even like go like this though. He just goes straight up like right onto his shirt. Yeah, he's disgusting. He's really gross. And so like when spring comes around, he's doing that like eight times as often. And doesn't get a tissue. Nope. Like just straight up and I'm out like, the nose. Pernicio, you really, you really, really need to get like allergy medication and he won't do it. Just take an Allegra. He's, he's so lazy. <laughs> just take an Allegra. He's like so unbelievably lazy. Um, he really just needs to take that. And he's so gross. He's bad. He has bad table manners. He has bad. Um, oh, I feel like someone who's blowing snot rockets definitely has bad table manners. Like, he'll blow a snot rocket at the table, probably. It's bad. It's like, dude, we just went to a restaurant, like, last Friday, and it's like, all right, when you're talking, don't face me. Yeah. Because you are spitting on me. That is so gross. And I'm trying so to eat. Gross. I'm someone who doesn't even like the sound of other people chewing. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that would really bug me. Do I ever bug you? No. <laughs> We, we eat lunch here, like we do this right after lunch, so. Yeah, you don't, no, it's not, I don't know what it is. I think it's more so when, like we usually have something on or we're like chatting. Yeah. It's like when you're sitting at a table and it's quiet and everyone's like enjoying their food and you oh, hear it's just like the, the very, chewing. Yeah. That's what like really grinds me. I'm like, can we just all stop? Yeah. There's actual people that have to wear, like it's like a really big thing, like it's an actual like phobia, and they have Isn't to wear like, headphones because they literally can't do it. That might be, is that you? No. Okay, so she's it's not, not that really bad. autistic. <laughs> <laughs> Am I really autistic? Um, yeah, well, it's like misophonia, isn't it? Yes. Something think, like that. Yeah. There was a girl on TikTok that I just recently saw and she was literally just wearing headphones at the table and I was like, that is so bizarre, but. Do you remember, I feel like there was a period of time before like everyone pretended to have every mental illness known to man, but there was um, A time before that? You yeah, this was a time before that. that. It was like 2010 or 2009 even. There was like some story of this girl who like got some bizarre, like she suffered a stroke or some brain aneurysm 
and she was like completely inoperable like normally but for some reason when she was walking backwards she was normal again what i swear to god this was a thing like you're saying so she was like when and, and i'm only imitating just so i could show you what i mean when she was like in a normal state she was like I want to, want to be normal. But then, like, she'd start walking back. She would say, I want to be normal. Yes, and okay. she'd be crying. But then she'd be, <laughs> then she'd be walking <laughs> backwards. Bad. She'd be walking backwards, and she was normal again. So she's faking. I think so. I think that has I to be, like, she just is trying to be, like, a miracle child. Yeah. Like a miracle person. Yeah, or someone. Like, oh, the girl who walks backwards to show and you is that. normal. Yeah, I'm like going to roll a clip that. right now of that. Of, it's like this old NBC story. Desiree can run just fine. It's only when she stops. You see, that's where the, that's where the spasm start. Now, you can walk backwards, though, and, and, and it'll make it better, right? Yeah. I'll watch it when it's there. Um, <laughs> and there's another one where the girl was like, I've been hiccuping for six years and never Oh, stopped. my God, the hiccup girl. Yeah. I know the hiccup girl. That had to be fake, too, right? I think she finally stopped hiccuping. She was on, like, Dr. Phil. Mm -hmm. She was, like, all over the place. That had to be a mental thing. Even if it wasn't a thing for attention, that had to be a mental thing. Mental thing or just like straight up fake. Yeah. Because there was also this girl that I went to high school with. And if anyone from high school watches this, they would know exactly who I'm talking about. This one girl who during class, she would sneeze like 15 times. Oh and God. it would stop the whole entire class. Like everyone would hear her sneeze once. And then it's like, all right, we got to wait now because she would do it. But it was like so fake. It was like, achoo, achoo, achoo. How many times do you actually have to sneeze? Do you know what I mean? What is it with, there There really is some sort of strange like mental thing about people faking like sounds that they make. For attention. For attention. Do, I, so when I worked at uh, my summer camp job, uh, the photographer I've told you about I think is a creep now. Um, he posts like pictures of ballerinas on his Facebook by the way, like little girls. And it's like, at what point do we say like. This isn't right. Because it's like, we know what ballerinas look like and how they dress. Yeah, and, okay. let the parents post that if they want. Yeah. Anyhow, so he, I swear to God, did this thing where, like, in order to make sure that you knew he was still in the room and he was still with you, like, five minutes on the five-minute mark would just go, <laughs> it, like, literally just like that in the most obnoxious way possible. And you'd just be like, okay, dude, like... Y'all right? You're you're here, and we I know you're it. here. Yeah, yeah. The people that clear their clear their throats too loud. It, it's it's all mental. And it's like gross too. It's like, dude, keep it to yourself, you weirdo. Yeah, like I get it if like you're literally struggling and you feel like there's something stuck in your throat, but like that is straight up for attention. Yeah, and you know what's funny? Like when I when that happens to me, I'm embarrassed. Like I'm just like, okay, I have to leave the room now. I'm this is too much now. I have to leave because now I'm now I'm a distraction. <laughs> I'm even embarrassed to like blow my nose in front of people. You know what I mean? Cuz yeah. it's gross. It it's is. like it's just gross. a common courtesy to like walk out of the room, blow it's the your same nose. the reason you shut the door when you go into the bathroom. Right. Like even if you're just peeing, everyone knows what that right. is. You it's know like what a I mean? private bodily function that yeah. you have to take care of. Leave the room. Yeah, I don't understand why people do that. My question for you that I actually remember what my topic was, was um, obviously you've had a lot of moments in your life that you were like, if I had done something differently. But there is there one that comes back to you a lot where you're like, and even something simple, like I'm talking something really early on where you're like, if that hadn't happened. Like that's early my, in my life? Yeah, that's my butterfly effect moment. Ugh. Where like my life would be different if I'd made a different decision there. I don't know. Do you have one? I do well, have I one. Think it's a simple one. one. Mine's a cute one, not like a serious one. But like uh, back when I was in, and I've told a lot of my friends this. I haven't told you this though. When I was in elementary school, I used to have a buddy named um, Aunt, and Aunt lived around the corner from me, and we were really good friends. Like, we did everything together. You would come over to my house legit every single day. And um, our parents didn't much like each other, um, and uh, especially my dad didn't like Aunt because Aunt was constantly at our house, um, which I guess can get pretty Just annoying, annoying after a while. Okay. Over yeah. all the time. It's like we have two of those. We don't need another. Mm -hmm. um, but we would go exploring. Actually, one time we went into the back of, <laughs> this is not a lie, by the way. This sounds ridiculous. We would go into our woods a lot. And we just one time wandered into someone's backyard because it connects with the woods. And uh, 
he had a trampoline and uh, that person just so happened to be a convicted child predator. <laughs> We got in so much trouble for our parents, but um, so you walked into the backyard of a child predator, yeah, that had the taller did... one. Wow, <laughs> you embarrassed the living crap out of that guy for sure. Yeah, he was like, "This is just what I need: more children." <laughs> <laughs> he he wasn't like trying to lure you guys in or anything. Well, the trampoline lured us in. It was we were bad kids so wait how did that even transpire though like we we came out of the woods like ah trampoline and we just started jumping and out. this guy's inside he like, comes out and he's like what are you kids doing here and then, and then he called our dads in reality he wanted to be like i want these kids in my basement he was like i like them jumping <laughs> yeah <laughs> jump jump Don't for more. me he was like getting all sweaty and he's like all right i gotta stop this that's like the ultimate pervert for like girls though is telling them to jump i know we're, we're just boys <laughs> yeah <laughs> but anyway that wasn't even my story but we got into a lot of crap um but one time he was um he had a birthday party he, oh that wasn't your butterfly moment no that wasn't the butterfly moment so the butterfly effect moment was he had a birthday party i think somewhere in like fourth or fifth grade and um it was a really big one. He had a nice backyard and like he had like cotton candy machines. Like this was a big, stupid fourth grade birthday party. Yeah. And um, he had a pinata and it was a really big one. Do you know what um, Yu-Gi-Oh is? Any yeah. Chance? So it was the character from Yu-Gi-Oh and um, it was really big. And so like I would say like child size. And <laughs> like it was the size of an actual What was child. it hanging from? A tree? Yeah, it was hanging from the tree. And so when we knocked it down um uh one of the cool kids his name was tyler put on like the shirt and body and was like i'm yugi i'm yugi i'm yugi and he would just dance around with it and i was like that is too good that's funny and so i put the head on and i was like i'm yugi i'm yugi and then i jumped into the pool with it and um anthony's mom thought i was drowning <laughs> <laughs> thought she jumped in she Took her heels off. She jumped like the equivalent of a story down into the pool to come and rescue me. And the whole How party, was it a story? It their their backyard was like deck, secondary and deck, and then the pool's like down. third deck, and then pool. So she jumped. She jumped, and she saved me. And the whole party stopped. And um, I had to be... Just because you had this Yu-Gi-Oh thing on your head? I wasn't... I mean, the, the, the true story is I wasn't drowning. I was not drowning. You were just being a little I was just being a, a dumb little, little doe. And, um, yeah, from that point forward, uh, I was not allowed to hang out with Anthony anymore. And he was like my whole... F like, he and his friends were like my friend group. And, like, I wasn't invited to his outings anymore. Oh, that's so versa. sad. And, like... His his people, like, his friends, or I should say our friends at the time, were all very sporty people, and so was I. Like, I was on soccer teams, I was mm -hmm. on basketball teams, I was on the baseball team. So you guys were, like, constantly in that yeah. same... Wow. And that changed it for me forever. Like, my whole friend group changed from that point on. So you guys didn't talk at any point, like, later in life and, like, rekindle or anything, or it was just, like, that was the end of it? We kind of did, like, in middle school a little bit, where it was just like, but at this point, I had been so kind of ousted from that group that we were just fundamentally different people at that point, where, like, I could not relate to these guys anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, I, at one point in my life, was a very sporty dude, and then I kind of lost that. You had to change your whole entire group and direction yeah. of life because of that one moment. Yeah. I, like, don't. I can't think of a singular, like I have the ones that are like, oh, like if I hadn't been in the exact house that I am now, like I wouldn't know these people and like that. But like, I can't think of like a- One that you affected your own destiny? Yeah. And I feel like there has to be one. I know I affected someone else's destiny. Great. <laughs> I, and I still feel bad about this one. I think I told you this. I'll make it really short. The really short of it was we had this friend named, let's call him G. And, um, G. He's a G. G was like part of a really close three friend group. Actually part of the new friend group, Af Post. <laughs> this 
um, I do room. have one. I'll tell it after this. Anyway, so the, the really quick of it is that we were really good friends for a while. And um, in late middle school, I started going out with this girl. And this girl was very touchy-feely. And so she, she was a bit crazy, I'll be honest. But um, my friend G thought he was, like, she was interested in him. And then when we started going out, he, like, started a crusade against me. Oof. And, um... Nothing like a girl getting in between. Oh, yeah. But she, but the thing was that she wasn't even remotely mm-hmm. interested in him. He just thought she was. Um, and anyway, so he started a crusade against me and started this whole thing online where he was trying to, like, cyberbully me. But single-handedly, what he didn't know was I had a bunch of online friends who could do that. And we did it, like, ten times harder to him. And, um... He completely changed as a person afterwards. Like, I'm talking completely, like 180 as a human being. Um, and he was a bit of a loner, and then he became a stoner. <laughs> and then um, that became his entire friend. Like, like everyone he had knew previously did not like him after that. And that wasn't really my fault. It wasn't. He brought that onto himself because he, That like, was just more of self-sabotage at that point. Yeah. But I, I felt bad at, like, the online stuff because cyberbullying was one thing. I wouldn't really call myself a cyberbullying in this situation. We were just kind of retaliating. I don't know. You told me some things that direct me to think that you <laughs> are a cyberbully, so... Or at least was a cyberbully. Oh, I'm uh, not sure about we were, today. We were trolls. Let's, I mean, we were trolls. I wouldn't say we were straight up bullying some people. We, we only acted in retaliation. Yeah. Like, we never really sought to stop people. So we retaliated against him, and the other one you heard was a retaliation as well. True, but I still think it's cyberbullying. But yeah, like to this day, after that moment, I swear to God, his life changed. Like he was not the same person after that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I don't know. It's crazy to think that there's so many things like that in your life. That's like, like if I didn't decide to go back to school, I wouldn't be with my boyfriend right now. But there's one that happened like later on in life, not like as young as you're talking about, but like. In high school, I had a best friend, we'll call her Taylor, and (laughs) we were friends for like 10 years, and I had gotten a boyfriend, and the boyfriend was not so great, you know, to me or like any of my friends, like kind of like that boyfriend that like would keep you from hanging out with your friends and just people in general. Mm -hmm. And so it created like a rift between me and my best friend to the point where like we literally fought, like fist fought right. at school Yeah. and like someone else jumped in. It was like a whole thing. But it's like if that like little thing didn't happen, if we didn't fight, like we probably would have gotten over it. But like then the parents were involved and then it was like a whole thing. So it's like we would probably still be friends to this day. I think so at least you think that changed you as a person though like I'm saying like it had a rippling effect in like who oh you yeah were. well I mean well I think also in the case that like so many things like I think about if I was still her friend to this day like a lot of things would have happened to me like bad yeah. things oh bad things. like there was times I, this is like gonna get a lot less vague now but like where she was in like a major car accident because oh my god the boyfriend was driving drunk and they had like um minors in the car and like just like things like that like she went to jail a few t- and it's like if i was still wow. like her best friend her buddy like my life would have like it, it didn't turn out like wonderful you know like I mean no (laughs) yeah like now it's great but like I mean like my story wasn't like so far from that I guess but it would have been so much worse had I interesting not been in that yeah situation interesting and it's crazy to think about yeah it's funny how you like my she story. has kids now. She's thriving. Oh, she's, she's doing I'm, good now. I'm cheering her on from the sidelines, yes. That's good. Yeah, it's it's really interesting how, like, in my case, I affected my future <laughs> over a really stupid decision, right? I affected that one kid's future in in my own way. But, I mean, like we said, it was kids was kind of self-sabotage. Yeah. Um, and then you with your friend, like, just those kind of moments that kind of change things. Because it's like, yeah, there, there are a lot of people I can say, like, had I never met them, I would probably be a very different person. Yeah. 
Like my second girlfriend completely changed my perspective on relationships forever. I would be a very different person if I had never met her. She was really bad to me. <laughs> yeah. So. I feel that. Yeah, same with me. Like, I think, I don't know if it was like my first or second boyfriend, but that same boyfriend, like, had I not been in that relationship, my life would probably, my perspective on things would be a lot different. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It like yeah. almost, it's almost like a trauma response where like later on in life, like here and now, like you still think about those things in like real time relationships. You're like, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, crazy. Well, we were talking about something the other day oh, and yeah. it was about, it was kind of in that similar oh. realm and it was about like what I, I proposed the question to him, like, what is our generation silent killer? Ah, yeah, that was a good one. I forgot. I wrote that one down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought about it the other day. What was I going to say? Oh, I was like, what if it's like just candles? Candles? Yeah. We were talking about like, yeah, like these kind of mysterious things that like, you know, in the past it wasn't investigated enough or we really didn't know enough about like sciences and biology where like an example was like cigarettes right. like back in the day every single person smoked cigarettes because nobody knew that they caused cancer and then someone proposed the study and there we go like yeah cigarettes cause cancer more people are finding like other methods whatever but it's like that was technically a silent killer because I think like I think humans have good intuition about what is innately unhealthy for them you know what I mean like that's why I really think, and we were talking about this, I really think that like eventually in the future, like we're gonna find out like the amount of time that we spend at computers on social media, um, in front of screens. Like there's really gonna be a huge study in the future on how badly that affected us and like what our brains look like compared to someone that died in the 90s. Before, oh yeah you know. and like we were talking about like airpods and i was <laughs> yeah. like what's the difference between like headphones and airpods and you brought up the point that there is like bluetooth there's like signal. there's literally a signal going through our brains Blasting, technically yeah. like to our phones like that is that has to be so bad for us and i'm sure there's studies out there that prove that it's bad because you know doctors still say to keep your phone three feet away from you or whatever like when you're sleeping and but it's like we're like, what difference does that make when I'm on it all day long, when I'm sitting in front of a computer, when, like, right, you know? Well, it's one of those things where it's, like, it, you know, all the studies and, and things come out where it's, like, oh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't let his children near social media. Huh, very yeah. strange. Um, certain people who own big tech companies don't let their children use that tech. Huh, strange. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, it sounds tinfoil hat. It's because, like, they know <laughs> something that we don't. They know something we don't. And they have the money to know it. Right. And the thing is, is like there's too many things that are happening in real time that we can't get the studies on because not enough time to, has passed where we know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cigarettes existed for since, what, the 20s? No, way longer, yeah. right? They existed forever. forever. People were like rolling up tobacco forever. Yeah, and so we could, there's no way to know. And it's like now vapes have been out enough time for there to be studies that like they're not good for you. But like, I don't know. And even if like... That's a scary one because they're figuring out that like pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> and then like it could potentially be worse than cigarettes. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> do I just go back to cigarettes? But um, going back to like the computer thing, like even if it's not like killing us, like it's got to be doing something for our vision. Like just. Oh, for sure. Like certain. I feel like I'm, I'm literally, we've talked about this, like I literally feel like my vision is going and I'm only 26. I know it is. I'm looking at my emergency care certificate there. And I really can't read that line under my name anymore. Successfully completed the knowledge and will and skill evaluation. Yeah, like it, it didn't used to take me that long to read that. No, I used to like, it used to be like a, a skill that I would show people like oh, yeah, how I could far read I could really read. far. I well, also used to have a really like good memory. Yeah. I used to have a, like... Me too. People, it's going. It's See, done. it's like things like that. It's like, what is doing that? Is it the screens? Is it the social media? Are we, like, just getting dumber? I wonder if there's a study in how quickly you lose your memory. Like, because, like, is it just that we're aging or is it that... Yeah, but there's no way. Like, this is, like, prime age. Like, right. This we're, is, like, where yeah. we're supposed to be, like, at our top tier. Yeah. And we're, in our and we're like, <laughs> we're, like, turning 90 tomorrow. Yeah. It, it is it is worrying because you're right and 
part of the problem with that, and, and I can say this from personal um, example, that social media, short-term stuff, like st all that stuff ruins your short-term memory. There's like no question about it. Your short-term short -term memory does not work as well when you are constantly browsing social media. Yeah, I mean, think about... Because you're not absorbing any information. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, just, like, TikTok, honestly, projected this everywhere. Like, just, like, really short-formed content. Like, oh, yeah. Even back when, like, Musical.ly was a thing. And Vine. And Vine. It's, like, now we're, we're soaking something in for six seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, and we're scrolling to the next thing, and we don't think about it ever again. Yeah. Unless it's like, oh, I want to show my friend this, like, ha, ha, ha. But, like, other than that, it's just short-form content that we're just constantly absorbing. So our brains are, like, almost training. And they're, adapting to, they're adapting to, to not take in, like, short-term payoff, no long-term memory coming from it. Like, I watch YouTube shorts. I'm, like, one of the weirdos. But, like, I try to only keep, like, the educational stuff just so, like, I can at least pretend that I'm learning something. Yeah. But like even still, like I probably couldn't tell you a lot of the science stuff that I watch because your brain is now trained not to remember that. It's 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 trained to take in short term information and not keep it at all. Yeah, um, and that's another thing. That's another tinfoil hat thing. Why is um, TikTok is a Chinese owned company? Yeah. Right? Why is it that in China, like it's either children can't use TikTok or there is it was a banned. it was like strictly banned, wasn't it? For, for like, for like oh, children. Yeah. yeah. In general, and they were trying to like ban it here. I don't know, but well, they were they were trying to ban it here for like security reasons, which is fair enough. But like, yeah. we should be looking at the health of our children. But you're right. It's like why are like going back to that? Like why are all these companies like not letting they know something their own them. people use it? And it's like let's just dumb down the Americans as much as we can. Yeah, <laughs> dumb down the populace because the the dumber yeah. the populace is, the more they the more they'll put up with. This is so. This is tinfoil hat territory, but it's true. I mean, this is this is political rhetoric. This is it's just like, in oh. a way, training us all to just be sheep. Yeah, it's a way to subvert the knowledge of a population mm -hmm. is by making people stupider and therefore more susceptible to doing stupid things. Being you know accepting of things that maybe you wouldn't have accepted. Well, and I'm, yeah, that's like a literal thing, just in general, like you see something so many times that you get numb to it like whereas like sure. some things like shocking i'm not shocked by that anymore like i used to like hate gore like anything like but i'm not shocked by it anymore and when you think of like what's That's, the movie yeah. psycho when that came out that like shocked audiences i know and you watch it now and it's so and tame. it's like how it's like so fake yeah it's one it, it, that that is one of those scary things is that you, you're blasted with something enough and you just don't care anymore when you see it, right? And and yeah, you become more numb, emotionally numb to like everything. And now kids are being given that. Right. I think yeah, there's certainly going to be a lot that we see, and I really don't think people should argue in favor of this stuff. Where it's like, oh, but we had access to blah 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 when we were kids. It's like okay, let's not be obtuse. Not at this level. No one, no one at this level had access to like the internet that we have access to today. Right. Like, I mean, look, listen, the internet has always been at some level like pornographic, but like, my goodness. But like there are sites that now you can watch like people get decapitated. Yeah. And like, it's just not. And they pop up on like, dude, these pop up on like YouTube shorts, these pop up on TikToks, and it's like, what, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> like, those are the things that like are a little shocking, but it's like, you get fed that information enough that it's like, oh, I'm not surprised though. My younger friend, like, he has been blasted with so many gore videos that like, it just does not affect him at all anymore. Like, he just comments, he's like, oh, wow, the, the guy's head is gone now. And it's like, that's okay. <laughs> That's good for you. <laughs> You're okay with. You're okay with just kind of just not reacting to that. That's the kind of stuff that disturbs me, and it's like I, I think that's why a lot of movies aren't as effective anymore to a lot of audiences because it's like just to even create like a horror film with like jump scares has got to be like, you know, it's just I don't know. Yeah. Just the creation, I feel like, is completely changed because people are so just used to seeing crazy shit. Yeah. 
Yeah, inundation of anything is probably a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair to say. Agreed. What's a snack that you ate too much? <laughs> yeah. What's a snack that you ate too much, you inundated yourself with that made you actually sick of eating it? Are you actually asking yeah. me? Yeah. I eat a lot of nuts, but I still love nuts. You still love nuts? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, don't, I feel like I don't overly consume the same thing all the time. Fair. I think for me it was like probably like probably like those like cheese doodles. Like I think I got really sick of that. I, I can think. see that. Because it's just too much. There was one point in my life with, with peanut butter. I've told you this. Where I was just, I would literally just come home and eat peanut butter, and it's, and it's like that. By the way, not healthy. No. It is like so much oil and so much. Fat. It's good in small doses because yeah. it does have protein for you. But. Protein's good, but like yeah, not at that level. Um, you just made me think. I think I may have told you this. We had this guy named Chewy back in my high school. He was this tubby kid, very troubled dude. Chewy. His name was Chewy. His name was really Chewy. Straight up Chewy. Yeah. Like Chewy C H E W Y. He was, he was a Korean kid. Um, I wonder if he picked that name. Possibly. Yeah. Um, anyhow, Chewy was kind of a troubled dude, and um, he was always acting out in some way. And out of nowhere, he started getting to this like health kick, but like with no knowledge of what is healthy. <laughs> And so he thought what was really healthy would be just to start eating spoonfuls of protein powder throughout the day. I am not joking. He had like a thing that was like this big and you would just see him eating spoonfuls of it. I don't know how his liver didn't fail. That has got to be so bad for you. I have no Like those idea. are meant to be literally mixed with a decent amount of water. <laughs> <laughs> and like maybe one to two a day. He was doing that. I can't believe his liver didn't fail. God was on his side. I guess so. He's still alive. Dude is still alive. <laughs> Eating protein powder. Did you ever have a weird kid that did something just around your school that was just like... Just doing something crazy? Yeah. I had like a few. I had like a few of the like just ears and tail kind of girls. Oh, yeah. You know? Like, or the ones that would like meow at you like you're talking to them or there was like okay I don't know anything about this but have you ever had like someone in your school who had like a piece of paper and like they weren't talking for the day I what did. was that oh my god yeah that was that was like a wasn't that actually like a movement I think it was I don't know what movement but that I was, was always so confused by like it yeah, so you would have been in, like, 10th grade, and I was in 11th grade when that was happening. Yeah, I remember that. That was very common. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of weird kids in my school, like, a lot of characters. I've told you about CJ the Lyrical. Um, who's, who's that one? That's the dude who's like, holy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the archipelago group of furries that uh, would surround people and eat their food. The furries is unreal. Yeah. Wait, were they in your school? They were like actually dressed up. They had the tails and ears thing. Oh, but, okay. But, yeah, but like in real life, they, they were, were like they real were full that. blown furries. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I was told this story, but I was working at GameStop for a bit, and um, it's because it's a pawn shop. We need to see your ID when you give stuff, and they gave me like a furry ID card, and I was like, "Dude, I can't take this." Yeah. <laughs> I had like half the mind to rip that crap up. Um, but like it was it was so embarrassing. It was yeah, like, well, a furry ID card is like just so crazy. <laughs> that is just I was like, dude, I need a state ID. Um, like, like a real one. one. Yeah. Just when I asked for your ID. Yeah. And um, there was one dude this, maybe I'll end it off here, but there is one dude who um we called him the manager. <laughs> like that was his nickname? It was his nickname. He would come in like full suit, like like tuxedo almost. Come in wearing tuxedo. Um, he had like this big briefcase that had like the the combination lock on mm -hmm. it, and the on the inside of this dude's briefcase <laughs> was a portable DVD player. <laughs> Wait, Wait what? Like how long ago was this? This was high school. <laughs> So like, why do you have that? <laughs> and he'd bring in movies. In a locked briefcase. In a locked like, briefcase. Say less. What is that? And he, and he was always dressed up super prim and proper. Like, 
<laughs> we called him the manager because he was like he was like a CEO. And yeah, he'd open up his briefcase at lunch and just watch like the Dark Knight. <laughs> Stop. That's actually honestly a flex, but yeah, that's crazy. Some weird people in this world. Uh huh. <laughs> I think that's good. <laughs>